We're gonna talk about basic tools for patching with drywall. So in drywall, typically you'll have yourself a mud pan, all right? Now, some people have a flat board that they'll use. A mud pan works good. I prefer a metal one over a plastic one. Um, you always wanna make sure that before you start, your mud pan is clean, that you don't have any residual from the last time that you drywalled or anything, because any of those dry pieces could mix with your mud, and when you're trying to lay it flat on a wall, you're going to get bumps and things hanging in there. The other things that we use are drywall knives, and you have all different sizes and everything with drywall knives. You'll have smaller versions, you'll start getting into a larger version for taping or mudding bigger areas. When it comes to drywall knives, it's whatever works. So for the areas that we'd be doing over here, a smaller knife works. If we have a larger area that we're trying to fan out, then we would use a larger knife, okay? You always, again, wanna make sure that your knives are clean. They're not bent, gouges, chips. Sometimes when people are scraping walls with these, they might hit a nail or something. And if you do, it will knock a divot in there. Basically, that knife is garbage. Get rid of it, okay? You wanna make sure that your knives are always clean. You shouldn't have mud all over the handles. And the easiest way is, after you're done mudding, after you're done taping, clean everything, okay? Wash it all down, you know, regular water, we'll just take it off. And also, when you're purchasing these, you wanna make sure that you get something that is riveted or screwed in good right there, that, you know, you're a little bit rigid, but not too flexible on your knife and you want something with a good handle because you don't want to be working everything and because you want a little bit cheaper on the tools, it's falling apart on you, okay? As we get into smaller things like for scraping small areas, I always prefer having a couple smaller knives, medium ones, and then usually I'll have even like an eight or a 10 or a 12 inch, depending on what I'm working on, so I have everything that I need. When you go to your mud, all right, there's typically two kinds of mud. You have your pre-mixed, and then you have your dry that you have to mix with water yourself. On the pre-mix that we'll be using today, you have different variations of it. You have some that when you sand it, it will not give as much dust. Really, you kind of get what you prefer and what works for you. But Looking inside the bucket is one of the most important things on a used bucket of mud. You get a large amount of mud like this. If you're not using it all, what happens is, now this one has a knife in their scrape for scooping up mud, but you get mud that dries in here. So if you're not scraping the mud all the way off, and this was not scraped all the way off, and you have mud that's drying up here okay on your lid or you have mud that comes over this way and you put your plastic lid on okay when you go to pop this off what are you doing you're dropping everything in to your mud so what happens is all this stuff that's dry okay will start falling into this mud so now you're mixing wet mud with dry chunks, and when you go to lay it on a wall, you're gonna be picking those chunks out of everywhere and you're not gonna get good mud laid down. I like to scrape everything down. Pre-mixed, when I get a bucket of pre-mixed, I try to get what I'm going to use that day. So if I need a full bucket of mud like this, then I run through it. If I'm gonna use a smaller bucket, I do that. If you're mixing your own mud, which ultimately I prefer because the advantage you have is it's in powder form, you mix it with water, you have the ability to mix up what you use when you're gonna use it and you won't get something like this. But disadvantage is you gotta mix all your own mud. It takes time, okay? So you can't sit there and just go, 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 all right? And if you don't use the bags over time, moisture gets in, they harden up. Advantage, the powder is cheaper than it's buying pre-mixed. 
The powder also offers mud that dries quicker. So in mud, the catalyst, right, is water. The way that it dries is it gives off that water, then it gets hard, okay? So you can get five minute mud, you could get 10 minute mud, 20 minute mud, things like that, but you also have to be careful of if you are using that type of mud, and say you have a 20 minute mud, so you mix it up and that means you have 20 minute workability on it. You go to work with that, if it's very humid, okay, if it's a hotter day, okay, you might not have 20 minutes of workability, okay? And if you put too much of that mud in your pan, it might dry into your pan and harden up. It might start hardening up as you're trying to lay it down. So you gotta kind of think of, you know, if it's gonna take you a little while, get mud that has more workability. And the other advantage with the powder is you can mix it to whatever consistency you like. So this mud right here, okay, it's kind of like an oatmeal consistency, all right? But you may not like that. You may be looking for something that's a little bit more watery. You might want something a little bit more thicker so it can hang into some bigger areas so the mud isn't just dropping back in. But the biggest thing is picking the correct tools, making sure they're clean, making sure that you have what mud works for you, okay, before you ever even start to think about laying any mud down.